Okay, so this tutorial is going to deal with a different data set than the other ones had, but we're going to go through basically everything that we've learned all encompassing in the other video tutorials, and we're really going to put it all together in a sequence. Um, so for this tutorial, you're going to take a look at the data set that's called uh, data set practice, putting it all together, a video tutorial, something like that, but something related to the title of this, um, which is putting it all together. I forget exactly what I've named it, but something to that effect. Um, so once you've got that downloaded, um, come back, uh, press pause until then, and then come back and then we'll go through together exactly what we can do with that particular data set. Okay, so here we are back on our start page, our entry page, our data connect page, whatever it is that we'd like to call it. Um, and first we need to connect our data set. So this new data set that we're dealing with, right, is actually a CSV file as well. So we wanna connect that as a text file. Um, so, and then I've got to, let's see, find it. So it's actually called data set video tutorial, putting it all together. So if you want to know the exact title, that's the one that we're looking for here. Um, and so now we can see that I've got two that are CSV files. So two that I can select that's, I want the putting it all together one. So I'm going to hit open. We're going to take a look at our data and we're going to assume that it's okay for right now. So we're just going to assume that's good. Um, but certainly you would want to eyeball it as well to get a feel for the data if you haven't already done that. So then we're going to click on um, sheet number one. And so again, we're going to see our data points um, appear here separated into dimensions in blue at the top and measures in green at the bottom. And we can see certainly already that this one is significantly different because it deals with a number of um, other um, different measures that the other one didn't have. And so what actually what this data, let me tell you a little bit about this data set to start off with. So this is a data set that I actually use in my visualization classes. And um, it's one of my favorite data sets actually, because it's really good for, um, for teaching purposes. And it deals with um, COVID cases. So it's a fairly new data set. So COVID cases in the city of Chicago, in Chicago, Illinois. And it really has a lot of really interesting pieces here. And the other thing that I like about this data set, so I haven't given you the link um, where you can actually, you know, download it yourself. Um, but every single day they add new information to it. So um, it's constantly changing. And so there is a way in Tableau, again, beyond the scope of what we're doing in the competition, but there is a way in Tableau where you can actually connect directly to the data file and it'll update um, you know, when you tell it to update. So you don't have to keep downloading the file and manipulating it and all that kind of stuff. Um, for our purposes, we're just gonna make it a snapshot in time. Um, and I actually just downloaded it today, right before I did this. So. It may look a little bit different than when I originally did it a couple of uh, days ago as a practice, um, but that's really kind of the beauty of this particular um, data set. So I really, really like it. Um, and it, it really has some interesting info, especially when you can see kind of the trajectory of, of the pandemic. So that's really what we're essentially doing here. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to um, pull some data into our workspace. So what I want to do is I want to take the dimension week number, so week number, and I want to just drag it anywhere into my workspace. And so we can see that Tableau is automatically recognizing that this is some kind of numerical data, right? Because we've got the number symbol here. Um, and we've got this timeline um, and it's, remember though, this is a measure, not a dimension, even though it's a number because it's in some ways associated as a dependent, uh, I'm sorry, as uh, it's a dependent variable rather than an independent variable. Um, so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna take the dimension um, weekend and we want to drag it into the rows area. So we're going to take weekend and drag it into 
our rows area. And so now we can see, um, just as I mentioned, this continuously updates that we've got now three years that we can see are represented here. So we've got um, 2020, 2021, and 2022, which given the topic of the data set about COVID in Chicago makes sense because pre-2020, there wasn't any, right, um, that we knew of. So that makes sense here. And this doesn't necessarily mean anything to us either, but remember, um, we can extend out by quarter, we can extend out by month, and um, so on and so forth. Um, and so we want to go all the way down to days. So let's get it all the way out to days. Um, we should look a little bit like this. We don't really um, want to care as much about the quarter, so let's take this out. Um, I think we do... Uh, let's take out year, just with the understanding, though, that if we take out year, so we might well, actually, no, let's keep it. We're going to keep the year um, in there, um, but we do want to take out the quarter. And so now we can see that we've got year and then like, you know, March, whatever. Um, and then if we scroll down, we move to 2021 and we can see kind of the tick marks there um, through all of the, and remember we're looking at the week numbers and all that. Um, and then we've got 2022. So again, knowing what we know about our data, right? COVID in Chicago, starting in March of 2020 makes a lot of sense, right? And then, we end, you know, basically yesterday. Um, and so that's where our sheet um, certainly will help us out. Um, but this seems a little bit tedious. So what I want to do is I want to drag all this out of the rows, right? I'm going to drag it all out. And so we've got that blank timeline again. And now what I want to do is just drag that weekend dimension back into our rows. So I'm gonna bring it back. Um, and again, we should look as we did before. And now what we wanna do is we wanna actually select day, but not this day, we wanna select the second date. So we're gonna click day. And that now takes us to days. But again, remember, um, we can see that there's differences between the 2021 and 2022 and all of that sort of stuff. Um, so we can see kind of the progression, you know, um, week one, week two, week three, whatever. And, but we don't actually have any numbers actually in this visualization. So what we wanna do is drag out um, the day weekend. So we've got this one here. We wanna drag it out of columns. I'm sorry, we want to drag, wait, what did I do here? Yeah, we want to drag weekend out. So drag weekend out. Oh, I'm sorry, no, I'm messing myself up. Weekend here, and let's drag the week number out. I believe that's what I want. Yes, that's what I wanted to do. All right, so now what we want, and again, remember, see, we've got a number of different years issued here. So now what we wanna do is take the measure um, cases cumulative. So we've got cases cumulative and we wanna drag that into our rows area. Okay, so now we've got a little bit of something that looks to us like a graph, right? Something that we might recognize. And again, this does it make sense to us knowing what we know about covid right it probably does right so it started off low got bigger got bigger you know um 2021 started um leveling off and then omicron so and then it went up again so this looks like it would make sense to us right so it looks it looks like that that would make sense we can also see that let's just hover right here um the day of the week ending october 24th of 2020 the number of cumulative cases looks like it was about um 98 or so um and let's go back to our actually 
yeah, let's go back to what, what, what date did I say that was? October 24th, right? So let's go back to our data source tab, data source. And um, let's see, does anything actually equal out in terms of cases cumulative? Nothing here really is up to 98,000, right? Um, so something doesn't seem right here. Um, so really what's happening is, again, they're adding everything up, right? So everything's getting adding up and this is going to kind of be a little bit um, problematic for us. So we need to be aware of exactly what is going on here. Um, so we can add labels, but we know that we know that that's happening. So we're gonna just leave it for right now. Um, so what if we wanna add the labels? Um, so we wanna click um, cases cumulative, and let's drag it into our label. It's gonna bring us, it's gonna make our visualization really messy, but there we go, right? So we've got a lot of labels here. Again, really messy because we've got a lot of data points in here. Um, we, we, don't want, we don't want that. Um, and, but these again are gonna be aggregated or summed together for every single zip code in Chicago that's represented um, in the data set. And this, that's why it says the total um, sum of this. Now, maybe we don't want this line chart. Um, so in that marks area, see where we've got automatic here? Um, let's choose bar. So now we've chosen a uh, bar chart. And so now we can see that we've got uh, a bunch of data. Again, we're organized here in, in terms of our um, in terms of our years and all of that. And we don't have all of the, the labels or anything on here. Um, but I think in terms of this particular data set, I think that the um, line chart works better. So we're just gonna hit control or command Z um, just to go back to ultimately where we were. The other thing we notice is we have a null value in here. So let's click on that and see what this data is showing us here. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but we do have a null value. So let's just, um, for ease, just hide that indicator. Chances are there might've been a week where they didn't report anything. So it was just blank. Um, but let's take a look now at this sample visualization. So why is it represented the way it is? So it could be easy just to assume that because the data labels for data across the bottom um, and the number of cases are more vertical on the um, axis, that the cases are in the column and the date is in the rows. And that's, that's not the way it is. Um, it's actually the opposite. So again, if I want to look at my date, I've got to go up and down, right? Um, if I want to look for the number of cases, I have to go across in a row. So that's why everything is plotted out in rows and columns. Each date has its own row. Each number is going to have its own, I'm sorry, each, each date is going to have its own column. Each number is going to have its own row. What happens if we want to swap them? right? Actually, I'm, first I'm going to take the labels out of here. So I'm going to pull the labels out just to make it a little cleaner. What if I want to swap it around, right? What if I want the cases to be in the columns and the dates to be in the rows? Well, I'm just going to play flip it, right? So I'll flip it. And so it flips it. It just flips the axes. Don't like that. I'm going to keep it the way it is though. Um, <clears throat> what if you don't want a line or a bar graph? Well, this is what Tableau assumed you want it based on the data that you selected. So a date and a number. Um, but it's not the only visualization type that's available in Tableau, as we know. Um, and so in that top right corner, we've got the show me area. And so we've got a number of these visualization types that Tableau can create. Um, and again, only the ones that are available to you based on the data that you've pulled into the visualization so far are going to be highlighted. The rest are gonna be completely um, grayed out. Um, so let me just go over a little bit about what each of these are. So this particular one is going to be a text table. This one is a heat map. 
We've got a highlight table. We've got the symbol map. So that's the one where we have like the dots on each country or state or whatever. Um, then we've got a map. We've got a pie chart, stay away from those. Um, we've got horizontal bars. We've got stacked bars, side-by-side -side bars. Um, we've got a tree map, circle view, side-by-side -side circle view, continuous lines, discrete lines, dual lines, uh, continuous area chart, um, discrete area chart, and a dual combination line and, and bar. We've got scatter plots. We've got histograms. We've got um, box and whisker plots. We've got Gantt charts, um, bullet graphs, and then also packed bubbles. And so again, depending on what it is that you'd like to do, you're gonna pick that particular visualization. <coughs> All right, so let's look at adding some secondary measures here. So right now, our visualization is showing the number of cumulative cases. So what if we want to see the number of new cases for a particular week? So let's go into cases weekly and let's drag that into the row area of our worksheet directly after some cases cumulative. So we're going to take that and we're going to pull that into there. All right. So now we have um, we've got two different um, line graphs um, and the slopes look different, but actually let me pull in, um, actually, let me go back. Let me, let me get that cases cumulative back into the label here. And then let me take the cases weekly and pull that there. And so um, our, our slopes and everything look different, but the labels wind up being actually um, the same for the data points. So for example, here in the end, we've got 533 and here we've got 533. And the problem here is because when I added back in the cases cumulative into the text label field, um, that's actually the label that's showing, you know, actually for everyone. So let's just go into the all area and let's pull that out. So we don't want those labels anymore. So let's get rid of those labels. So instead of having that all marks area open, which is controlling both of the visualizations, uh, we want to open up the cases cumulative marked window. So we just want to, we just want to control the top graph and let's drag cases cumulative into that label field. So cases cumulative label field. And so now we can see that those labels are only popping up on the, the top of the graph where we've actually told them to go. And so let's do the same thing for the second. So let's open up uh, the sum of the cases weekly. And we're going to take cases weekly and put that into the label. And so now we've got the appropriate label showing on the appropriate graphic. Um, but what if we only want to have, instead of these two separate um, graphs, we want to have one graph with both data points plopped together. So we need to change the visualization type. So let's go back into that show me area and let's pick the dual lines, which you can see actually now that we've got a lot more data points, there's a lot more highlighted here. So dual lines is going to be this one. So let's pick that, close show me. And now what we've got, um, and also you'll notice that the labels all disappeared, right? Because what happened was um, it doesn't apply now that we've actually changed the, the visualization type. So we need to drag each measure into the appropriate area for that text label again, if we want it. But um, so again, let's do cases um, cumulative. So cases cumulative into label. So again, we're only really showing it on that particular graph. And then the cases weekly. And again, we're gonna put that in the label. And so again, now we've got that um, showing here. Um, that's if we don't want to deal with the tooltip, but obviously, if you're just if you're just looking at this, it doesn't look good, right? There's a lot of a lot of text um, there. 
The other thing that we're going to notice here is that everything seems like it's actually in sync. So it seems like the cases, um, the new cases and the cumulative cases tend to be somewhat in sync because of numbers. But again, we want to look at the axes on each side. So cases cumulative is really going from zero to 500 or a little bit more than that. And the cases weekly from zero to 45. So we're actually on completely um, different, like different, um, measuring scales at this point. So that's not going to help us. So what we want to do is we want to right click on either one of the axes, left or right, doesn't matter which one, and we want to actually synchronize those axes. So we want to right click and we want to synchronize axis. Now that looks a lot like it makes a lot more sense because if you, I mean, if we're doing cumulative cases on the blue line, right? we're adding more and more, you know, from the beginning of the pandemic versus the new cases each week, um, which obviously is not going to be as high of a number. And so that um, significantly makes sense. We also actually don't need both of these axes to show anymore. We don't need a left axis and we don't need a right axis because they're actually synchronized. So let's get, um, let's get rid of the one on the right. So we're going to right click on the right axis and see where it says show header. We're going to uncheck that. So now we only have one. Um, so we only see the left axis now, which is good, but we still have a problem because of the labeling of the axis. So the labeling of the axis only says cases cumulative, but it's actually used for the cases cumulative and the cases weekly as well. So we actually need to change that. We also actually really theoretically don't need that label on there as at all because we have the color the color code um, in the um, key. So let's remove that label as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the axis. We are going to click on edit axis. A window will pop up and here we've got the title. We're just going to change that. Let's, let's just change that to number of cases. So we're going to change that to number of cases. And we are going to close this out. Okay, so now let me get that off so we don't have that highlighting. And so now we have something that looks a little bit more like this. Now, maybe at this point, this is something we haven't talked about yet. We want to save the workbook, right? Let's save this workbook before we go any further. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into file. We're going to go into save as. And here it defaults to a specific area. Um, I'm just going to save it to my desktop just for, uh, actually, I'm going to just save it into my documents um, just for now. Um, and you know, I have a choice of a .twb Tableau workbook or a Tableau packaged workbook, TWBX. Always err for the Tableau packaged workbook because if you just do the Tableau workbook, it doesn't include your data set as well. So if you're sending it to someone, you would need to send them the exact data set that you used as well as the workbook. And if you made any edits to the data set um, file, the CSV file, or if they make any changes to the CSV file, they will not connect versus the Tableau package workbook will automatically include really both of those things together. You won't be able to separate them um, on your hard drive or anything like that but you don't have to worry about having one file and not the other or having a different version of the file. So I am going to have this saved as new folder and I'm just gonna call it um, Tableau Tutorials. And I'm just gonna save this as sample book one, just so I know which one it is. And I've got the Tableau packaged workbook. And so I have saved that and now I've got it saved up here as Tableau sample book one. All right, so the next thing that I wanna do here um, is I want to add some colors. So colors in your presentation are going to be really, really important. And there's something that you really need to think very carefully about. Um, so in our current work workbook, we've got two colors represented. We've got the blue and the orange, one for the cumulative cases, one for the new weekly cases. 
it's the easiest way for us to tell which line belongs to what. And we've got that legend there that tells us um, what each color represents. But we can uh, play with color in a number of different ways. So in that all marks area that we already have um, here highlighted, um, I'm actually going to drag out the measure names in um, color because I don't want them. So I'm going to drag out everything. And so everything now is blue, um, at least on mine, it's blue. It might be a different color on yours, but you can change the color of the entire visualization. Like maybe I don't like blue. I like um, purple. Um, and so I can click on color and I can change everything and I'll just pick purple, right? So I'm gonna just pick it to purple or, I mean, personally, I like blue, but um, I'll change it to red, you know, something like that. So I can change everything, but that's not meaningful. It's monochrome. I can't tell what line belongs to what, you know, piece of data. Um, so that's something that we're probably not gonna stick with. Um, but also in this color area, again, we can change the markers. So I can change, you know, for each particular data set point or, you know, whatever. I can change the opacity. I can add borders. I'll come back to that in a little bit. So for right now, I'm just going to keep everything the way that it was. Um, let me close that out. Um, but from now my left hand menu, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out, uh, I'm going to take my zip code and I'm going to uh, drag the zip code into color. So what this is ultimately going to do if we think about it, it's going to give me a different color line for every Chicago zip code that's represented in this data set. So as you can imagine, it's probably going to make this data, um, this data visualization look really, really messy, but that's okay. That's what I want. I want it to do that for the, for right now for illustrations. And there it is. Right. Um, and so we've got uh, that happening. Um, and so now we have a number of different colored lines, each one representing a zip code here. And um, we need to drag this up. So, I mean, clean it up. So let's take the sum of cases cumulative from our rows area. And we're just gonna drag that out because we just really wanna look at the new cases um, each week. Um, also, we wanna drag out the sum of cases from the label. So we don't want any labeling here. So let's get rid of that. Um, and we can also see that by doing that, our left-hand axis that was showing us the, um, the, the, um, the number of cases, it's gone, right? Because that we had it still connected to the cases um, weekly, we need to add them. We, we had taken that one out already. So it was the cases cumulative that we had kept when we had done our dual access. So we need to add that um, back in. So in our rows area where we've got that cases weekly, um, we wanna hover until we get that little drop down arrow. And what we wanna do is we wanna show header. And so now we've got this back and it's back for our cases weekly. And um, that makes sense to us now. And Again, we can play with color here. So again, let's pretend that we've got, we're gonna present this workbook. We would not present this workbook, but if we were presenting this workbook, um, we let's say we had audience members that we knew were colorblind. Um, so we can very easily change that color palette. So I can click color, edit colors, and I can pick um, either specific colors for specific zip codes if I wanted to do that, um, or I can choose an entire palette. So I'm gonna pick colorblind. And I'm going to click assign palette and I'm going to get an, a, a, it's going to yell at me. It's going to basically say that there's more colors needed than what's available in the palette. Um, so there's going to be duplicates. Ideally, you don't want that, but I'm just going to hit yes. Um, so we can continue for right now because I want to see what happens. I'm going to hit apply. We can see and I'll, I'll see that our colors change. So we can see, I'll, I'll, let me go back. We can see the difference. I'm just hitting control Y and control Z to go back and forth. We can see how the colors changed, right? So just going back and forth. It's kind of fun to see. Actually, I, I kind of like that color palette actually. Um, so we can take a look at that, but let's go back to our regular color palette, the non colorblind color palette. Um, and let's save the workbook again. So we're going to save it again. 
and I could hit save to just save over this. Or let's say, you know, I don't want to let go of the changes that I had already made previously, like just in case I just want to create a duplicate. I'm just going to save this one as sample book too, but you don't necessarily have to do that. And again, it was already highlighted as a Tableau pa packaged workbook. So I didn't need to do that to change that, but I would want to make sure it was a Tableau packaged workbook. All right, so this still isn't really very meaningful. Um, maybe I want to highlight a particular zip code. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe I want to look at 60612. I can't tell which one is 60612 on there. So I can actually click on it and it will basically put everything else, gray it out so that I can only see 60612. Same thing if I was just doing 60619 or 6061. You know, I could, I could do that with really any any zip code that I would want. Um, you click anywhere else, everything else comes back into full color. But how do we know, and I can also do it right here too. So if I only want to see whatever that pink one is, I can you know, also click on that and it'll highlight that one from the visualization itself. And again, click anywhere and they all come back into full view. Um, so either way, we can highlight a zip code on that. Um, but maybe, it might be better, just like we did in our previous tutorial, where we grouped, um, you know, the states in the U.S. into different regions. Um, it might be more helpful and certainly less data points on here um, to actually group zip codes together into areas of the city. So I'm not particularly familiar with the different um, areas of the city of Chicago. Um, so I just looked at, I just looked up um, a, a list. That, that I um, came up with. And it's not a complete neighborhood list, certainly I'm sure we could argue this, but um, I'm going to just create my groupings based on that. Um, and you can follow along with me if you'd like. Um, and so remember how we do our groupings. We're going, going to do it by zip code. So what I wanna do is I want to highlight my zip code, right click, and I want to um, let me see, hold on, sorry, it's not working here. Sorry, we don't wanna right click. Um, click on the arrow and create and group. And now we've got this window come, coming up. I'm gonna call it area of the city. That's what I'm gonna call it. Um, and I am going to, um, I'm going to pause um, the recording while I do this. Uh, well, I, let me do the first one and then I'll pause while I do the others because you don't want to sit here. It'll probably take me like 10 minutes. So you don't want to sit here while I just do all of that. Um, but the first grouping I want to do, and I'll just do the one that's the, the least amount of zip codes just to make it easy, um, is the Southwest side. So the Southwest side, at, at least according to the chart that I've got here that I found online, consists of zip code 60609, so 60609, I want to highlight that, um, 60629, so I want to go find 60629 right here, and I'm going to hit command or control, so that way I'm highlighting more than one thing, um, 60632 right there, 60636 right there, and 60638 right there. And so I should have, if I did this correctly, one, two, three, four, five highlighted. So one, two, three, four, and five. So I did that correct. I'm gonna hit group. And so now I have these together and this was, they said the Southwest side. So I'm gonna call this Southwest side. And now I've got the paper clip with all of these together. And I'm gonna actually, um, what I do when there's a long list like this, I always collapse the grouping that I've made. So that way I don't have to scroll through as much. Um, so I'm gonna create the groupings. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause my recording in just a moment so you don't watch me um, kind of, you know, um, <laughs> try to find all of these numbers and, and group them together. But um, certainly you would do this, you know, with your own visualization, but I'm gonna make groupings for the neighborhoods of downtown, the far north side, the far southeast side, the far southwest side, north side, northwest side, south side, southwest side we just did, and then the west side. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. Um, 
it'll be like a magic two seconds. I'll be back. It'll all be done. But for me, it'll probably take like 10, 15 minutes. So uh, just bear with me and we'll be back in just a second. Literally. <laughs> Okay, so I'm back. I've got all of my groupings done and all of my zip codes are taken care of with the exception of null. So apparently we've got something in our data set where there's no zip code filled in. Um, I don't want it to say null, so I'm just going to hit include other and then it creates a grouping with everything that's not left over, you know, not grouped otherwise. Um, and so now we've got that other. <clears throat> And I'm going to hit um, apply. And you can see that area of the city is now popped up um, as one of my data points. I'm going to hit OK. And now our visualization actually hasn't changed because we haven't done anything. Um, we haven't dragged that new dimension into our visualization window everywhere, anywhere yet. So what I want to do is I want to pull the zip code out of my color mark. So I'm going to just get rid of that. And that way, um, it'll just be a single line graph. Now, I actually want to do it based on the area of the city. I want that to be my color. Um, so I'm going to take that new area of the city grouping that I just created. I'm going to drag that into color. And we still got a number of different line graphs that have popped up here. Um, but it's certainly much better um, than every single single zip code individually. And if I hover over each of these, I can also see that um, I've got that area of the city now um, included in my tooltip. Um, and then we can also see that the cases weekly have actually been added up for, you know, whatever the date or the week ending date is um, for all of the zip codes that we included in that group. So for example, right now I've got the, the week ending February 27th of 2021 in the downtown area of the city, um, there were 371 new cases that particular week. Um, and so that's that's of interest there. If I look more towards kind of more recent times, if I look at, um, let's say, what, what, would, what would we do downtown before? So downtown, um, if I look at downtown, in the week ending January 8th of 2022, there were sev almost 8,000, actually 7,800 um, new cases. If I look at downtown the week ending January 22nd, um, we're down to 2044. So I think that's the Omicron stuff that we were seeing. Um, so this makes it a little bit more reasonable for us to see. Um, what if, now let's just do, make it a little bit easier on our eye here. Um, what if I only want to look at, um, 2020? So, um, what I'm going to do in that case is I am going to take, um, let's do, let's do the week. do the week ending and we want the year. Um, so we want to filter because this is a date. So now we can pick years, months, whatever. Um, so we're going to pick year and let's say we just want 2020 just to make it a little bit easier for us to see. So now we're just looking at the year of 2020. Um, and again, if I want to look at just 2021, oops, let me make sure I click it we can look at 2021. I'm going to keep it 2020. Um, again, you know, we could look at the entire thing, but I think it's just um, a little bit easier for us to, uh, you know what, I'm not, um, we're just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to keep it with the whole shebang. We'll, we'll keep it with the whole shebang for right now, but I, I, I certainly could do that if I wanted to. Um, but maybe, okay, so let's take a look at this. And now it may be instead of the total sum of the cases in each area of the city, we want to see the average number of cases in that area. So, you know, like one zip code might have a lot and the other zip code might have none, but that's not the average for that whole area of the city. So maybe we want to look at the average. So instead of the sum, um, we want to look at, let's say, Fridge and look how that's changed. Um, and so look at now what happened with downtown, right? So clearly some areas of the downtown area um, 
again, I'll just go back downtown. At least let's look at the Omicron bump. Um, downtown had a little, like a lot of high number of cases, but then if I change it to average, downtown isn't as, it's actually one of the lower ones. So that tells me that some zip codes had a lot and some zip codes didn't, so we're averaging them out a little bit. Um, so our visualization changes now. But what if we want the sum and the average? So let's drag cases weekly from the measures area into the rows area again. So we're just gonna kind of put it right behind. So now we've got two graphs, one with the average on the top and one with the sum. And we can tell the difference because of that Obercon bump. Because remember the sum downtown was the blue line was really high up in the sum version in the average version it was not so all right so we've talked about filtering a particular time what if we want to see only that line so we got to do the filter um so let's drag that area of the city back into the filter box here or like we haven't done in the filter box yet let's do it we've got that pop up let's uncheck everything um except for south side so let's just look at the south side and we're going to hit OK. And so now we have two graphs, um, as we would expect, but just one line each. And they've got, there's almost duplicates, if not exact duplicates, um, because we're basically summing and averaging the same data points each week. So that's um, certainly different there. But of course, again, look, we've got different axes. So 0K to 3K, 0 to 600. Um, so even though they look the same, they're actually not because our axes are different. So it's kind of a trick of the eye in, in some way. So let's, we only really need one of these. Um, so let's take the average number of weekly cases and let's drag it out of our rows. So we're gonna go back to just the one graphic. Um, let's go back and edit our filter. Um, let's leave south side checks, but let's also pick north side as well. So we want to see the north side and the south side. All right, so now we've got two different lines. Um, but, you know, we don't want to click edit filter every single time. It's kind of annoying. Um, so let's go into our area of the city click on the drop down arrow and we're just going to click on show filter. And so now what happens is we have um, a checkbox filter on the right side of our screen that we can, you know, just easily check and uncheck um, if we need to. Makes it a little bit easier for us. So let's uncheck the north side and let's check downtown. So now that we've got um, downtown and south side are both are both highlighted. Um, so what if we want to figure out how the numbers for both of these are going to potentially behave in the future? Of course, you know, with COVID, it's a little bit hard to predict, but we can look at what happened in the past to help us predict um, what's in the future. So let's right click anywhere on our visualization. So we're going to right click on our visualization and I'm going to find trend lines and I'm going to show my trend lines. And so the default is going to be um, a linear trend line. So we'll be able to see um, those trend lines there. Uh, we can also show confidence bands if we want. So I can right click again and on trend lines. Now I have the option to edit my trend lines. And so we've got a pop up here and I'm gonna, I am gonna click up show confidence bands. And so I'm going to click that. And now, and actually I'm, I'm going to, un, I'm going to uncheck um, South side just to give you, just so you could see it a little bit more clearly for, for the moment. Um, and so now we can really see what the confidence band is of, as to how correct or accurate that trend line is going to be. Um, we can also still play around with this if we want, again, depending on what we want to do. Um, I can change it from a linear model type to a polynomial if I want to. And so I can do that. And so now we can see, you know, how that um, worked out. And certainly you can do um, the same thing for forecasts instead of trend lines, but um, we don't 
we can try that actually. Um, let me get rid of the trend line. So we don't want that. And we can also look at a show a forecast as well. And I don't think we have enough data points for that to work, unfortunately. So um, that you need a certain number. So let's see, forecast options. Yeah, so we've got too many missing values. It tells us we can't do that. But but if it if 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 we had enough, um, we certainly would be able to do that. So I'm going to save this for right now, just so that I remember. And so I, you know, if I I, I just want to keep it with the same name, so I can actually just go and find my desk icon and save. All right. So the next thing that I want to do is something that I didn't talk about in one of the earlier tutorials. And that is something that I think you will find very helpful for your, um, for your competition visualizations that you create. So that's creating a calculated field. So there is going to be very likely um, a situation where you have enough um, data points to be able to make a calculation, but you don't actually have the calculation in your data set itself. So you've got to create it. And so um, let's, um, let's start off actually by completely clearing our worksheet. I still want to keep everything connected, but I want to clear the worksheet. So um, to clear the worksheet, again, I can go to worksheet, clear sheet, or I can just click this um, graphic with the X. So I'm going to do that. Clean slate. Um, okay, so now that we've clean, cleared out our sheet, let's recreate a bar chart. So we're going to take the week number and we're going to drag it into our column. So week number column. Okay. Um, let's take deaths weekly. So deaths, not death rate, deaths weekly. And we're gonna move that into our rows. Okay, so there we go. All right, next we're going to move that area of the city grouping that we created into the columns area before week number. So area of the city before week number. Okay. All right, so why don't we have a bar chart? Um, week number, even though it's in the dimension area, it's green right? Which means it's behaving um, as a measure. So we don't want that. Um, so we want to click the drop down menu in the green week number. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to uncheck. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to check off discrete. So we want discrete. Okay, so there we go. We've got discrete. And so voila, right? Uh, week number has now turned blue which means now it's behaving as a dimension. And we now have a bar chart. And again, if we scroll, we see we have them also based on the areas of the city as well. Um, so we've had the down far north side, you know, and so on and so forth. Um, so let's re-add our quick, quick filter so that we're just looking at one area of the city. So let's right click on area of the city in the dimensions. Um, area and click show filter so that we've got that uh, checkbox and we want to uncheck all and let's just look at west side so we're going to pick west side and so that we've got that west side area of the city shown um, let's also change our chart type here so let's go into the show me area and we're going to collect uh, collect click the side by side uh, bars chart type, which is this one. And so um, here now we've got different colors based on the week numbers. It's not really doing anything because each bar already represents a week anyway. So let's pull week number out of the color area. So we're just going to make it all one color again. And remember that each area of the city is going to encompass a number of different zip codes. So instead, let's take zip code and let's drag that into the color area. And we're going to probably get the error message um, saying that there aren't enough colors and that's fine for right now. So we're just going to hit add all members anyway. And maybe we want to change um, the color palette. So we just want to practice doing that. So I'm going to change the color palette here to traffic light. Um, I'm going to hit assign palette 
and apply and okay. And so now we've got like kind of a version of red, yellow, and green. And so if I look at this, uh, just kind of by eyeballing it, it looks like um, 60623, which is like the dark red on my screen, seems to have a lot of deaths each week generally. And 60619, um, actually, I don't have 60619 on here, um, but I think it's 60639. Um, also seems to have quite a bit depending on the week. Um, so that's just eyeballing it though. Um, but what if instead of the total number of deaths each week, we wanna see um, the number of deaths per day. We don't have that right in our, in our data set. Um, and so what we can do, and, and this isn't a calendar, you know, this isn't a calendar piece, unfortunately. Um, and so, we don't really have that, that option. Um, this is not the way that you would do this because it's not going to be accurate, but it, I'm just doing it for illustration purposes, just to kind of give you an idea on how to do a calculation field. So theoretically the week would be seven days, right? So if I could take that sum of deaths weekly and divide by seven, it's going to give me a ballpark, right? Of what the number of deaths per day is. If this is like something you were handing in for a grade or making an actual presentation, I would not do it this way. I would think more critically about it. Um, but in the interest of time, and just because I wanna make sure that I'm showing you a calculated field, I'm just gonna fudge it in that sense. Um, so the first thing that I want to do is um, I want to right click in my measure pane, which is the green area. So I'm just gonna hit right click. Oh, wait, hold on. I gotta do it where there's no field highlighted. So I, I don't want any, I don't wanna be hovering over anything. I just wanna be like in the area. So I'm gonna go here and I'm going to create a calculated field. The other thing that I, I could do, um, because this is deaths weekly, I could do deaths weekly and hit um, create calculated field, but I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to hit create calculated field. And so now I've got a new window that pops up and we're going to call, we need to call this calculation something because it's going to be, it's going to wind up being a field in our measure area that we can then manipulate. So I'm going to call it deaths daily. And I'm just going to say fudged because I know that it's not really the correct calculation. Um, so I'm going to call it Death's Daily Fudged. Um, and really what I basically want to do is get my deaths weekly and divide by seven. Um, so I'm going to take my deaths weekly. So not death rate. I always want to pick death rate, but deaths weekly. And I'm going to drag it into that area. And then I'm going to type a backslash, which really... Um, represents divide and then seven. And if you'll notice before I put the seven in there, um, I get this message that says, hey, the calculation contains errors because I need to divide by something. Um, so if I put like zero, it's actually telling me it's valid, but it's not gonna help, right? So I gotta put by seven. And so now it's telling me that it is valid. Note, you do not need the equal sign like you would if you were doing something like this in Excel. Um, and so the calculation is valid. We're going to hit okay. And now it's already highlighted it for me. I've got my deaths daily fudged, right? And so that's the calculation that I've got. Um, and if you notice, and I'm actually gonna try to hover over it a little bit, you see that I've got the pound sign, the hash sign, the number symbol, um, but there's a tiny, tiny equals um, in front of it, which tells me that that is not a data point that's actually in my data set. It's a calculated field that I've created here in Tableau. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this new daily fudge deaths uh, field that I've created, and I am going to drag it into the rows area of my graphic. And now we're going to see that I think it's worked. Yep. Um, and it appears that there are potentially some differences here. Um, and so I'm going to remove the deaths weekly data point from my visualization. And so now I only, actually, let me go back. Um, so let's look at this. We've got um, the deaths 
daily fudged here is 2.2 and the deaths weekly fudged is 16. So we know that it's, um, that we know that it works because there's different numbers. Um, and so we're gonna pull out again, the deaths weekly. So we're just gonna have that calculated field in there. Um, let's try something here. Let's drag deaths daily. So deaths daily fudged um, from my measures list into size. So we're gonna pull it into size. And so what happens is now the size of each color on the bars are changing. So we can more easily see which zip codes have been the worst affected. And it looks like it looks like it has been 60623, the red one, unfortunately. Uh, although there are some weeks where it looks like the dark green, which is uh, 60639, has also had some issues as well. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I am gonna save this as a package workbook. So it's already in package workbook and I'm just gonna call this sample book three. Um, so I'm gonna save that. All right, so that's an example there. Um, I'm gonna clear my worksheet. So I'm gonna start from scratch again. I'm actually already gonna save it again. So I'm gonna save it as sample book four, just so that way I don't re save over anything that I didn't mean to save over. Um, and we're going to look a little bit more deeply at the maps now. Um, so let's drag a zip code into our workspace. And now we've got a, um, a map that is recognizing automatically because we know it's a geographical data point according to Tableau. We've got a dot for each zip code in the area of Chicago. So uh, basically, we have a map of Chicago with a number of different dots on it. Now, remember that we already created the grouping that's going to lump the zip codes into different areas. Um, so let's take that area of the city um, grouping that we've done, and we're going to drag it into color. And what we should expect to see, hopefully, and we do, is that each area of the city is going to be represented by a different color and we can kind of see the colors are um, really close in space to each other so uh, we expect that that would have been done right um, let's click on the color box and let's click edit colors and let's find the tableau classic 10 color palette so we're going to find tableau classic 10 um tableau classic 10 not tableau 10 classic 10 and let's hit assign palette, apply, okay. And so we've changed that a little bit, just slightly. We just have a couple like brighter and more distinct colors now. Um, and so we can see how these are, are grouped. Um, so now we wanna see the number of deaths in each zip code. So let's drag deaths cumulative into the size box and that'll change the, the size of the dot based on the number of deaths. The, large, the more deaths, the more dot, the bigger the dot. All right, so deaths cumulative, uh, deaths cumulative, and we're gonna pull that into size. And so now we can see that we've got different size dots here. Um, so how does this compare to the number of cases? So let's drag cases cumulative. Let's also pull that into size. And what that's gonna do is actually replace one with the other. So we can see, and I'm gonna go just back and forth. I'm gonna to toggle back and forth really quick. Um, look at this blue area. You can see the differences there. So I'm gonna go back and forth and back and forth. And so we can see the differences. It's minute, but we can, we can see them. Um, I wanna make sure that I have the cases cumulative is what I've kept up here. Yes, that, that's what we've got. Um, but what if we want to see both of those, right? What if I want to see the deaths and the cases together and compare them? Um, so I need to create a dual axis map. So rather than the automatic marks type here, um, what I want to do is select map from the drop down. So map. And that gives me a fill in map, um, which again, we can see how the zip codes are grouped, um, which is which is nice. Um, and so, in the longitude area, what we're going to do is duplicate the map by hitting command or control, and depending if we're a Mac or a PC, and we're going to drag it immediately next to it. So basically we're gonna make a copy of the longitude. So I'm gonna do that. Oh, I don't think it worked, hold on, let me do it again. There we go. I, I, I let go before it was ready. Um, and so, 
now we've got two basically duplicates of, of the same thing. Um, we don't want obviously two of the same thing. So what I wanna do is I want to manipulate the first map. So I'm going to get away from all, I'm gonna pick the first longitude here, which is gonna control my map on the left. Um, and so I wanna drag the area of the city out of color. So I'm gonna take area of the city out of color. So now I just got a gray map. So all completely one color. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the cases cumulative and I'm going to drag it into the color area. So it's gonna change the coloring. So case is cumulative, and I'm gonna drag that into my color. So now Tableau just guesses you want blue. Um, that's usually the default. But now the, and we can see the key here. So the darker it is, the more cumulative cases there is in that particular zip code. Um, and we're not separated now by area of the city on that left-hand side map. Um, we can also remove the size piece because size doesn't actually matter for the fill-in map. So we'll get rid of that. Um, and so in the second map now, the second longitude map, what I wanna do now is select dual access and that'll help them actually kind of layer on top of each other. So I'm going to click dual access and now we're together. And we can kind of see vaguely, um, if you look really, really closely, um, some of the grays area uh, zip codes are darker than others. Some of the greens are darker than others. Some of the, you know, this yellowy green color, um, but it's really hard to tell, right? And so it's really, really hard to tell. Um, so we're gonna need to change the colors around so that we can see the overlap a little bit better. Um, so what I wanna do is I actually wanna flip them. So I want, um, I want, want I wanna switch what's on top. So I want the blue to actually be on top. So this makes it a little bit easier for us to see um, that. Um, but then in the second marks section, I wanna make sure that the second longitude is selected, which it is. Um, so the one that we just moved and I'm gonna change the color from blue to gray. So I'm gonna get the color, I'm gonna edit my color and then I'm gonna change it from automatic to gray. So I'm gonna change it to gray and I'm gonna hit okay. And so now I can actually see the colors from the zip code areas come through a little bit better. And I wanna change the opacity a little bit so that um, it comes through a little bit better as even more. So I'm gonna click on color and I'm gonna change my opacity here from 80% to 50%. And so now it's even easier for me to see. And so now, now I actually have, I, I can actually see which area of the city now these belong to, but I can also see the shading um, much better as well. Um, so we can see like, for example, um, 60629 has a lot of cumulative cases. Is, um, for example, because it's shaded so dark. And the same thing is true for 60634. Um, now let's think about these tool tips though that we're just hovering over. So let's look at this one here. So 60620, um, um, it tells us what the zip code is. It tells us the number of cumulative cases, but I don't know what area of the city that is. Um, and I mean, I'm assuming it's the far Southwest side just because it's red, um, but with this shading, you know, it's kind of hard to tell maybe, you know, do I, how do I know it's not the Northwest side versus the far, it's, it's a little tough, right? Um, so I want my tool tip to really be able to help me with that. Um, and so I wanna make sure that the first thing I wanna do is before I edit my tool tip, I wanna edit it for both layers of the map. So I only have one layer highlighted here. I wanna go back to all, right? So let's go back to all. And let me drag the dimension area of the city into my detail. So I've dragged that into my detail. Um, and now if we hover over the zip code, now we can see the area of the city now becomes part of the tooltip as well. So when you put something in detail, it actually helps with that. Um, so now let's edit the formatting of the tooltip. So let's click on tooltip. Oh, I'm sorry, I clicked on label. Let's click on tooltip. Um, and a pop-up window will show you exactly what it's supposed to appear like. 
let's select everything and delete it, right? So let's get rid of it. Uh, now you see that there's this insert button here. Um, so we're gonna use this to insert the fields that we want to appear. So let me select my zip code. And here I will show you down here is where everything that we've dragged out of the data pane into our visualization actually appears here. So only those appear here. So let's select zip code. And we see that zip code populates in the box. Um, and we know that it's got the arrows around it and it's highlighted in gray, which means that it actually is pointing to a particular piece of data in the data set, which means it's dynamic and it'll change based on what we're actually um, selecting. Um, and so what I wanna do here is I am going to enter some text. Um, anything that's highlighted in gray is going to be, again, substituted with the actual data point. So we're gonna do zip code and I want to, um, I want there to be a parentheses. I want area of the city to show up and then I want to end my parentheses. And then I want my sum of cases cumulative. And again, it's highlighted in gray. And then I'm gonna to say total cases. And then I'm going to, and I just wanna show you what this is. I'm gonna actually type this and not enter it. Deaths cumulative. And so we can see that it actually recognized that as well. Um, now, I just wanna show you what happens if I get rid of the space. It may not work um, in this case. So we're gonna do that. Um, we're going to hit OK. And we can see that because I typed in the last one and I didn't actually enter it, it's not working correctly. Um, and we didn't use the zip, the insert button. And if I go back into my tooltip area, right, some of death's cumulative, it's actually not here, right? So it's actually not something that we've pulled in to our data set yet. So that's why it's not popping up, even though it's highlighted in gray. Um, so I'm gonna exit out of this for a second. Um, so let's, but we don't want, we don't want that deaths, um, we don't want that deaths cumulative to actually like affect our visualization. We just want to know it. Um, so let's take that deaths cumulative and we're just going to put it in tooltip because we want to bring it into the visualization and we want it to be available to us, but we only want it to be available to us through the tooltip. So it's still not working correctly and that's fine because we actually have to we're go in and replace it now. So we're just going to see it's there now. So we're going to replace it and we're going to hit okay. And now we can see that it's actually, um, actually working. Um, and so <clears throat> now we've got that. Um, and so all the information that we want is in our um, tooltip. Certainly we can format with italicized and sizes and bold and all that kind of stuff, but we don't really need to um, for this purpose, but you can do that in your real visualizations. We also see we've got two unknowns here. Um, I'm not sure exactly what, it looks like we've got a null and that's the only thing. I guess there must, there must be two data points in our data set that have null. Um, so we're just gonna hide that, whoops, hide that indicator um, cause null is null, right? Um, we've also got a lot of redundant elements here um, and we wanna declutter a little bit. So first let's remove the grayscale color legend. We don't need that. So we're gonna hide that card. We're gonna do the same thing for the size legend as well, cause that's relative. Um, and we, we, let's do that quick filter for area of the city. Um, so we can um, not do it this way, but we can um, add the filter, right? Take area, oops, take area of the city, drag it in. We're just gonna hit okay. Um, and then I want to show the filter. So that's how we get that quick filter. Um, so now that we have the quick filter, we don't actually need the color legend. Um, you could argue that you want it, but for purposes of the um, tutorial, we're just gonna get rid of it. Um, so let's hide that as well. So we're gonna hide that. Um, and then we already got rid of the unknown um, piece. And we need to add a title. 
So here we've got where it says sheet one. We are going to call this COVID in Chicago. Okay, that's what we're going to call it that. And so we've got our title. And again, we're just going to save this for the moment. So that's an example there. Um, So I also want to show you what else you can do. So go into the second longitude here, and maybe we don't want that map. Maybe we want to have, um, you know, a mark or a shape. So we're going to just pick circle here. And now what happens is we got rid of that gray overlay. We've got our, you know, areas of the city in full color. Um, but now we have a number of different dots that are dealing with the, um, the sum of cases cumulative in our color. Um, let's move that into size instead. So we'll change the size of the dots. Obviously this color is kind of getting a little bit lost. So let's change, let's go from color. We'll change them from, you know, default gray. We'll make them black so we can actually see them a little bit better. And here we can also, oops, hold on. Let me get back into it. We can also put a border on. Um, so I'm just going to, let's say we'll do a yellow border. Um, and so I can do, you know, a border to kind of pop, make them pop a little bit if I, if I wanted to do that and I can make the opacity more, you know, so I could play around with that as, as well. Um, so that's something else that you can do with this dual axis as well. So you don't necessarily have to have it be the same um, graphic type per se. All right, so what I wanna do now is we wanna start with, and actually, let me go back. Let me go back to where we were, to our original. There we go, that's what we want to keep with. Um, and so now we're gonna do a simple dashboard. And um, of course you can do these more complex as you want. I just wanna show you how to you know, ultimately do them. So first we need to create the visualizations that we actually wanna be using for the dashboard. So we already have this one. Um, and so I am going to rename this one. Again, it's gonna make it easier for me to be able to pull them later. Um, so I'm gonna rename this to cases just to make it easy. Um, now I wanna create a new worksheet. Um, and so I'm just gonna create a brand new worksheet here. And I'm going to drag my, we're just going to do some very simple things here. So I'm going to pull my week number into columns and my percent tested um, positive weekly. So weekly, if you hover over it, it gives the whole title. I'm going to pull that into rows. All right. So now we know kind of who tested positive, you know, in what week. Um, and I'm going to change. That's all I want to do for this one, really. Um, and so, again, we're just going to do some simple things to show you a dashboard. And I'm going to change the uh, title to positive, oops, if I could spell positive weekly tests. Okay. And I'm going to change the sheet name to positive tests. So that we've got that. And we'll just do one more. Um, so I'm going to go back to my cases tab. And I'm going to right click on the tab and I'm actually just going to duplicate it. So duplicate. Um, and so now we've got cases two. Um, and so what I wanna do now is in my second tab, I'm going to un uncheck the dual axis. So now we've got the color version and we've got the grayscale version here. Um, and in the marks area, we kind of went over this really quickly, but in the marks area, I'm gonna change the second longitude from maps to circles. So we've got those circles there. So now we've got gray points on your map rather than the filled in zip codes. I am going to drag some of cases out of color so that basically all of our dots the same color. Um, instead, I'm dragging death rate cumulative into size which changes now the sizes of our dots based on the death rate. We wanna make these a little bit easier to see. So I'm gonna click color. I'm gonna change my color to white and I'm gonna move the opacity to 85%. 
And I'm going to change that border from automatic to yellow. So there we go. It makes it a little bit easier to see those, right? Um, so now I want to kind of overlap them again. So I'm going to go back to that second longitude. I'm going to click that dual axis. And now we've got them um, overlapped as well. I want to do one more thing though, right? I want to change that death rate cumulative from a sum to an average. Um, and so we did this in the rows and column shelf, but we can do that in the size area as well. So we're just going to change that measure from sum to average just because we can. Um, and let's also add this to the tooltip. So we got to go back to that all marks area to make sure that it's in, you know, all of the tooltips. Um, so let's click that tooltip again. So we want everything to be the same as it currently is. Um, but I want that average uh, death rate cumulative to also be here so we can find it now, average death rate cumulative. And we're just going to make that say percent death rate. And we'll hit OK. And so now if we hover, we can see how that ultimately would go. Now, the death rate, you know, is going to be kind of funky because remember, we're aggregating things. So in your real visualization, you want to really think critically about it and how do you actually want to do that um, calculation and what numbers do you want to fill in and what filters do you want to do. But um, for purposes of this, I just want to show you, you know, ultimately how to do that. Um, so let's change the title of this worksheet because it's not COVID in Chicago. We already have a COVID in Chicago. We're going to change this to death rates. Okay. And I'm going to change the name of the tab as well to death rates. And we're going to save it again, just to make sure we got it. And so now what we're going to do, we have enough here to really do something with the dashboard. Um, so I'm going to create a new dashboard. The dashboard is that little four square icon. So we're going to create a dashboard. And the reason why we wanted to make sure that we change the titles of the tabs is because it makes it easier to know what we're dealing with here. Otherwise, it would have been like sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, and we don't necessarily um, want that. So let's now start just dragging them into our workspace. So um, let's just take those positive weekly tests. We're just gonna drag that in there. Um, we'll take that cases tab and I'll kind of, again, where you kind of put them, you know, see how it picks a highlight. You know, it's generally gonna tell you where it's gonna put that visualization. So we'll do that one there. And then um, the death rates, I'll try to put next next to that so they're kind of together. All right, so what we notice here is that on our right-hand side, we've got some duplicate legends, we've got some duplicate quick filters, um, which kind of represent the same thing. It made sense when we had separate sheets, right? It was kind of a one-off sort of thing. It's not here, right? So that doesn't really make sense to us. So let's get rid of that size legend first because that's not helpful to us. So we're gonna get rid of that. Um, we click the X, it's gone, right? And what about these duplicate quick filters? Now, the problem is if I just unclick one of them, I can see that it does. It only really, each one controls a different map visualization and it doesn't actually affect anything with the positive weekly tests. So the quick filters, so it was the cases and death rates, right? So we had a quick filter here, we had a quick filter here, we did not have a quick filter here. And so it's really just pulling everything from each individual visualization. Um, so that's kind of an issue. So let's go back to our cases tab. And um, at the filter on the cases tab, um, we, could, we could have done the other um, tab as well, but I just, we just have to pick one. Um, so, on the drop down, I want to click where it says apply to worksheet. See, it says only this worksheet. I want it to apply to all of the worksheets that use this data source because we're using the same data source for all of the visualizations that we just put into our dashboard. So we're gonna click all using this data source. And so let's go back to that dashboard. And now we need to figure out 
one of these quick filters is going to affect everything and one of them isn't. So we wanna get rid of the one that doesn't affect all three of these visualizations. So I'm just gonna pick one. That one looks like it is affecting everything. Actually, that one's also affecting everything. Um, so we can just X out. So we're just going to, let's say far north side. We're only looking at the far north side. Now we're looking at the far north side and the north side, right? So we can see that that um, is working in the way that we would like it to. Um, and so you can also play around with the formatting and the size of the visualizations. Um, for example, I can make that one, you know, I could play with these however I'd like um, to, to make it make sense for the visualization and the space that I have. Um, I can move that over, you know, a bunch. You, know, you, could, you could play with this however you want. Um, and so I'm like, you know, this one makes sense to be kind of small, right? Um, and so we also want to, um, let's see, click on the box here that says show dashboard title, because all of this really deals with COVID in Chicago. So we actually want to title this COVID in Chicago, because that's really what our dashboard is showing, which doesn't make sense now to have this visualization called COVID in Chicago. So let's go back to our cases. And you can see how even that filter that we picked on the dashboard now applies here too as well. Um, so let's just change this to be cases. Um, so we're just gonna make that cases. Let's go back to our dashboard. And now this has also changed to cases. So that really helps um, in terms of, you know, how you're gonna set up your dashboards, uh, which is what you're gonna wind up presenting to the judges. Um, I can also change um, you know, the size. So like, for example, if I want it to be on a desktop browser or I want it to be um, like a PowerPoint, you know, it, it can change the size of the, the visualization and whatnot. Um, so I'm just going to keep it as it is for right now. Um, and so we can also see again that all of our visualizations are edited by that filter as well. Um, so I'm going to uh, save. Oh, the other thing you can do as well, um, this kind of show icon, which looks kind of like a PowerPoint um, show icon. If I click that, it actually brings my visualization into full screen. So if I'm presenting it, you know, this would be something that I would ultimately um, look at doing. So I'm gonna hit escape just to get out of that. And I am going to, I'm going to save that. And that's really going to end um, kind of the quick and dirty tutorial on some of the basics of Tableau and how you would ultimately um, wind up creating your visualizations and creating your, your data sets and your dashboards. Um, there's a lot more that you can do with this. So the Makeover Monday folks are certainly available to help with those more details. I can't go into kind of every single possible um, minute thing that Tableau can do because there's so much of it. But as you're trying to build your visualizations, you know, trial and error for me works wonders most of the time. Um, I do a lot of research online as well. Like, how do I make this happen? Um, and that's really how I learned myself um, a lot of it. But there's going to be things that you can't figure out. There's things that sometimes I can't figure out, right? And so that's where sometimes the Google searches don't help and where you need to talk to someone about that. And that is the perfect opportunity for the makeover Mondays. Um, and then your student mentor is also going to have some basic knowledge in Tableau. Some are obviously going to be better than others and we've kind of mixed them up. Your judges are going to have varying um, abilities in Tableau. Some have never used it before and some are absolute experts. So it's purposely been, um, kind of mixed and matched so that it's kind of even across the board. We've got the experts, we've got the folks that don't, and the Makeover Monday students are really the true experts in terms of the student mentors that are available to all of the students. Um, and those, please take advantage of that. That's, that's really helpful and it's kind of an on-demand all day thing on Mondays. Um, but I hope you found this helpful and um, 
I'm always happy to answer any questions. So feel free to email me as need be. Um, if there's other things that you have questions about and a lot of the teams have questions about, you know, I'm happy to set up also additional tutorials, but that's going to conclude kind of my preset um, kind of basics of Tableau tutorial.